you make a time. And the uh, first thing I want to ask you about is, speaking of the pandemic, what have you guys been doing since you've been off the road? Well, I'll start basically because what I do is kind of do our schedule. We've, um, it's interesting, we haven't really lost in the term uh, concerts. We've basically postponed them. After this started and people realized that we were not going to work the next two or three months, they kind of moved. Uh, I've moved some of the dates. And so some of the dates moved one calendar year. I mean, we had dates in late March, three Texas date that actually moved to March of 2021. Some of them have moved four or five months down the road. And then as we've gotten to those, they've moved again. So basically we have been, we have just postponed a ton of dates. We've done two dates. We did a date in Franklin theater or a live stream to only 70 people because that's all we could really do in there. And then we did one in uh, Bremen, Georgia last Saturday night. Uh, we've got one next month at the in Bowling Green at the uh, amphitheater, uh, at the Corvette Museum with uh, strings, but it's outside. But most of the things, we have about 15 or 16 left this year, but I'm thinking they're probably all going to move into 2021. That's mm -hmm. what I've been doing is moving dates. Yeah. And Steve, I'm assuming that when you're doing these, you know, in addition to the lower capacity at the venue, there's probably no meet and greets, probably very, you know, limited promotional things that you can do. So it, it probably feels like a whole new world, you know? Right. We've actually done two. And one was the 70, like I said, at the Franklin Theater, where there was mm -hmm. nothing. And then the, the other night, there was no, there's no contact. I mean, we, they did a great job spacing people out, uh, wearing masks. There's no meet and greet. We're, we're ad adhering to all the things that we're supposed to be adhering to, to make sure that we stay safe and away from one another and still be able to walk on stage and sing and entertain people. So. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm glad that you're getting out there and, and doing some dates. So, you know, I hate that I missed the Franklin Theater date. I heard that yeah. was great, even with smaller capacity. Well, Rudy, you might want to address that because we're looking at, uh, they're going to make a decision in the next month or so what they're going to do. We, we had a date at Christmas, um, yeah. but we probably will not be able to do that. So we, we may be able to get something done after the first of the year or, or something else. Rudy, okay. you there? Yeah, I'm here. Wait a minute. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm Captain America. <laughs> Which way'd they go? <laughs> Welcome to I our universe. <laughs> Question was Franklin Theater. <laughs> hey, uh, Rudy, nice to hi, see Deborah, you. Hi, Deborah, how are you, hon? I'm doing great. I <laughs> love the mask. This, thank you. I've got, I've got several of these. I've got a, a layer like this. I've got a Red Raider, Texas Tech Red Raider. I've got a Texas. Uh, gator, I've got I've got them in every color. Look at this, I got them in every color <laughs> to go with every outfit, and then but then I got these a bunch of the flag, and I've got some thin blue line, uh, that honor the policeman, you know. Wonderful. And that and then I saw one the thin red line which honors the firefighters. So oh, I'm gonna order that. some of those. So those yeah, are just, great. Isn't so you great? asked what Rudy's been doing during all this? Rudy's been ordering masks. Is what Rudy yes. <laughs> Good it's, for you, Rudy. It's <laughs> raining. It's raining gator mask over here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have, I have some brand new T-shirts that I bought that say "Country music fans matter." Anybody want some of those? Sure. Oh, CDMM, I, I like love that. it. Yeah, I've got one that says "Songwriters matter." Of course. You know, if you wear them, you probably get boycotted, but uh, we didn't get here by being, you know, pacifists. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, well, I want to get that. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted Rudy to talk a little about the Franklin Theater date, and then we're going to get into how you got here, you know, which well, has been a that was, wonderful road. That was an idea I had, you know, 10 years ago, long story short. Uh, and uh, I looked at through the years, trying to put all the pieces together, the venue, the, the platform, the cameraman, the back office to take the credit card, get the code, all, you know, getting the band together and the songs together. Well, I say the songs. My idea was to do Gatlin fan favorites, all the other hits mm -hmm. that we don't have time to do because we've been so blessed to have 35, 40 radio hit records. So we did 15 of them. I can do volume two and three before I even exhaust all the radio hit records. And it went over great. Had some videos from some friends of ours introducing some of these uh, songs. And we had a great time. We went through every song at Soundcheck. Do y'all know that? We yeah. don't do every song at Soundcheck, but we went through it after we'd rehearsed a couple of times. Steve, 
we went through the whole show because it's like, this is, whoa, these are great. Larry wrote a bunch of great songs. We made, mm-hmm. were blessed to have made a bunch of great records and that we haven't done in a long time. And stay tuned, volume two, we'll get to that. If we don't this year, hopefully the theater will open back up for us to do a Christmas show. Stay tuned. That, <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. You know, guys, I can't believe that y'all are celebrating your 65th anniversary in the business. How does that feel to have reached that kind of milestone and still be out there doing it and doing it so well? Well, it was a short-lived tour. It was only about six weeks, January, the first half of February. We did 12 dates. <laughs> <laughs> or six shows, however we did. Now you tell about how I started. He, he, he was the oldest in Abilene, Texas when we started. I still am. I still am the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't turn 68. Let me tell you, <laughs> Brother Steve Gatlin and I went to the row house today and did our <laughs> So I'm, I may be old, but I'm still in pretty good fettle. You know, do y'all I, sing uh, row, row, row your boat there? I, mm-hmm. I have had uh, <laughs> this weird sensation the last six or eight months, you know, isn't there something I'm supposed to be doing? You know, I love to play golf. I tell people I only play golf on days of the week that end in Y. <laughs> but uh, just a little jokingly, you know, talking about that. But the, the music is such an important part of our lives. Now, it's not just the way we make our living. We've never felt that was uh, the main reason. And it has been a good living for which we're grateful. But last week in uh, that little Bremen Theater or the the Mill Milltown Theater that we love there in Bremen, Georgia, uh, the first when we came out with "Well, Houston," I mean it was cool. And I said, "I've I've got a pretty good job. I I and I I mean this with a grateful heart. I get paid to listen to the Gatlin brothers sing harmony. That's not a bad mm-hmm. job. We're pretty good at that. We ain't good at yeah. a lot of stuff." But God's mm-hmm. blessed us, and we're pretty good at that. And and the great blessing is that people, there are still enough people alive, old codgers like us, oh. you, you know, <laughs> who will pay 30 or 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is, to come see shows. We do not take that lightly, trust me. Uh, mm-hmm. And we're, we're grateful, you know, for the fans' participation in, in coming to hear the music. Yeah. So we- you were asking... And I'm just saying, you, we started, Larry was, Larry, were you Larry, six, seven, when we started? I was three when I first went on radio. And then as y'all, then uh, you and Rudy kind of came along. I, you know, mama was going to enter me in a talent contest. I was six and Steve was four, Rudy was two. And our, uh, our aunt came in and said, Billy, talking to our mama, said, why don't you put them all in the contest? And Mama mm-hmm. said, well, they can't sing. They were too little. He said, well, they're sitting in there around the hi-fi. Oh, RCA mm-hmm. Victor, I can see it right now, blonde with little slots for the records. And you pulled it out and put the needle on it, 30 big old album. And they were, they were standing there singing along to the Blackwood Brothers and the Statesmen, you know, old gospel quartets. So they, and Rudy couldn't do a lot, but he was humming along and, you know, looking around. Steve and I sang the lead, both sang the lead part. But we, I don't remember not doing this, really. Of course, I don't remember what I ate for breakfast either. <laughs> anyway, uh, well. That was March of 1955. So that's why this is our 65th. This past March was our 65th. And we were celebrating the whole year as our 65th. So we may all celebrate next year. You know, it's the 66th. You know, that's what we're planning on. That's cool. Yeah, and in addition to the the tour, which I know has been cut short, what other things were you doing to mark this milestone? I mean, there's not many acts that can, you know, can celebrate a 65th anniversary in the business. That's that's quite an accomplishment. Well, uh, I'm also working on a a video, but I'm going to take the footage that we shoot this year and then edit next year and come out with a DVD, a documentary, something uh, about the 65 years. Plus, we might want to elaborate on the uh, the album, tribute album. Oh, you are doing a tribute album? Who's doing the tribute album? Yeah. We are. 
No one else was going to get around to it. So we're just going to do it and have a bunch of our friends uh, join in with us and sing their favorite song. You know, like, I think, Larry, did you say Vince wanted to do Done Enough Dying or? No, Vince uh, wanted to do The Heart. The Heart, okay. Alison Krauss loves Love of a Lifetime. She used to sing mm -hmm. Alison Krauss. She sang that with a group before she became Alison Krauss. And uh, mm -hmm. Rascal Flats ought to do all the gold because they did that in their tour sometime mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. So we're working on that. And that'd be a great project to get around to because we can social distance in the studio. Everybody goes in their little cubby hole, you know, and yeah. we put on the headphones, we make records. Mm -hmm. That is cool. When can people expect to hear the tribute album? Are you, have you already started working on it or like? We're working on it. But we haven't been in the recorded. studio yet. Yeah, we've not recorded anything yet, but we're working on the list and people to be, you know, that would like to sing with this. Uh, I'm sure it won't get done. I, I say that this is September. Uh, so we're talking three, four months, probably be after the first of the year before it's out. I've been talking to Gordon Moat is going to help us produce uh -huh. it. Uh, such a brilliant, uh, well, first of all, one of the, the great human beings on the planet mm -hmm. and a great musician and producer. And, uh, uh, we're what we'll probably do is you know we'll find the people who want to be a part of it and mm -hmm. we'll invite people you know who we know and, and would like to be a part of the thing we'll probably have a big group sing on all the gold or on broken lady or houston or something uh, and i don't mean it as a catch-all but you can only do so many people so it's only going to be volume one yeah. maybe but, but our old buddies, the Oak Ridge Boys, you know, people like that, and T.G. Shepard, and Steve Warner, and Mo Bandy, Gene Watkins, you know, Jeannie Seeley, uh, people like that who have, have done uh, either record, recorded my songs or our albums, albums. So I, I think we might get in the studio. I've, I've, I'm Hope losing so. my light. Uh, I'm gonna try to get in the studio with Gordon and, you know, find out listen to these people's records and find out what keys they sing things in. It's going to be kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, Vince, you know, Vince made a lot of money. Vince is, is sing is not the only girl singer in his house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's cold there. Oh, oh, oh. Pop -pop. He well, he wishes he could sing as good as Amy. Yeah. <laughs> he almost yeah, sing as high as me. <laughs> he wishes he looked as good as Amy, but he don't. Yep. <laughs> now, he can play guitar better than she can, I think, but that's about all. Oh, yeah. That tribute album is going to be a great project. Well, and we're looking forward to it, getting started. Hopefully, we can do it sometime this fall. Cool. And, and Larry, I'm, a, I'm like you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Gordon as a producer, piano player, and a human being. So I'm, it's exciting that you're working with him. Have you done something with Gordon before, or is this your first project with him producing? Well, the things we've done with Gordon have been uh, in connection with Bill Gaither. You know, mm -hmm. I've done a couple yeah. of sessions with him where we were overdubbing vocals or, or, or recording tracks or something. And he's just, he's just a master musician. He, uh, you know, being, he may not be able to see with his eyes, but he can see with his soul and oh, yeah. hear with his heart. And uh, it, to see him at a keyboard uh, in a studio or anywhere else is just, uh, it's a gift of God. He is a special breed of cat. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I saw, him, I saw him live at First Baptist Church in Dallas a couple of years ago. Uh, Guy Penrod, who else was there? And the First Baptist Choir. And then, <laughs> and then Gordon <laughs> sat down and just tore it up. Oh my, he did, uh, uh, oh God, no, that's right on the the tongue, the song, uh, the one I like Randy Wills to do, the, something about heaven, I can't remember what it, but boy, he just tore it up. Great, a wonderful mm -hmm. talent. Oh, <laughs> he is, he's amazing. And uh, I also wanted to talk to you about the recent deal you struck with Time Life to uh, get some of the existing catalog back out there in a big way. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we have, we went back in our catalog. We've got several projects that we've done over the years. I've done two or three solo albums. Larry's done a couple. Uh, we've got a Christmas CD or two. We've got various things, a big band, uh, oldies, um, things that we own that really haven't had been out in the last few years. And so 
slowly we are coming out with some new things. The first one was uh, my, my CD, my Christian CD from a few years ago. And then we've got a double CD that would be great at Christmas called We Say Merry Christmas. So those are the first two projects. Then when we took some time off in the early 2000s for two or three years, Larry moved to Austin, we moved back to Dallas, and Larry did an album called In My Life. That was a gospel album that he did. So we've got various mm-hmm. projects coming out, but the first two are uh, mine and the uh, Christmas CD. We say Merry Christmas. Hopefully yeah. we'll do uh, several others in the next coming coming months. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I, want to, I want to say we got with, uh, with the folks at Star Vista and the Time Life thing with the two mics. And uh, just about the time we were entering into this agreement with them to be partners, because, you know, uh, Steve and Rudy know more about the internet and stuff than I do, but that part of the world has kind of passed me by. Mm -hmm. So I need some experts. And uh, when when these guys sat down and showed us the the different places and venues, uh, I mean, Spotify and all that stuff, I, I can't spell Spotify. Uh, where yeah. if you just if you just kind of give it a little bit of effort, you, you know, we have always said that if, that if we could get our music to the people, that they would come hear us and they would buy the music. Mm-hmm. And we that happened back in the seventies and eighties. But now, uh, we're we're probably not going to get on country radio, and that's fine. It's it's Josh Turner's time and, and Little Big Town and all, and we're happy for them. But in our golden years, uh, these guys are going to help us because they know how to do it. It's, uh, that, that's that's their, their life is taking that content. So we, uh, we've kind of fallen short on that too. We need to give them some ammunition, you know, kind of to, uh, well, ammunition is probably a wrong word because somebody will boycott my house. Material. Anyway, uh, material. <laughs> Kind to give material. them some, some yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, they know what to do, and we're looking forward to it. We've kind of, I've probably played a little too much golf and hadn't been doing enough thinking about this thing, but uh, I've got little projects of my own, uh, you know, to put on YouTube and things, just little solo things about the songs that I've written over the years. But the stories, you look at my wall, my wall of shame in my office, the people not just people we know as fans, but the people with whom we've worked over the years, uh, you, you know, from, uh, from Barry Gibb to Johnny Cash and Elvis and Barbara Streisand and things like that, that, that tell a great story. So uh, the folks, good folks at Star Vista uh, are going to help us, uh, you know, get that done. And don't give up on the Star Vista people. We're trying. Yeah. Well, this has He's, been a new experience for everyone. I mean, everyone's gone through trying to adjust to the last four or five months. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I believe that it will get better, you know, and, and you use the word eventually. I don't know when that is, two months, three months, five months. There'll come a time and place where we'll all be able to gather again and sing. But right now, we're just all kind of feeling our way through this this particular thing. And like I said, we're just moving dates down the line and and. We're, we hope you come in. If, if you had a date on the Gatlin's the last three or four months, you can probably go to their website, as is ours, and see that we have moved that to sometime to 2021. So we'll be back out there. Okay. So one, of the- my, one of my deals is that I, uh, the technology really scares me. I'm sorry. I, it, it, it befuddles my brain. But uh, my son Josh ha- has uh, moved back, like I say, from Dubai. And he is a master photographer. He is unbelievable. Some of the things he's taken of the kids in the desert over there with camels and all kinds, it's, mm-hmm. it's marvelous. And, you know, I remember that uh, there's a video, an, an advertisement that shows these kids having a snow fight, you know, uh, and, and it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, to, uh, an advertisement for Apple or iPhone, I think. But they're, you know, they're sliding down the mountain and they got the sleds and they're throwing, and all of that was made on an iPhone oh, well, yeah. or an Apple phone, whatever you call it. So Josh says he knows how to do that, to edit some things together and some stories and songs that I want to do. So we're going to be having some content out there along with these uh, new records. We've got a new song I wrote called, called Fair Winds. Uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to go in the studio with Gordon 
because we figured out five or six different ways to cut it kind of as a pop song or a folk song or a country song and just go in there and, and let some great musicians, instead of us telling them what to play, like we've done on occasion because we had a preconceived notion of what it ought to be. We're going to just let everybody pitch in. So I, I'm excited about uh, this and I love singing with those two scoundrels there on the screen. <laughs> Hurry up. My grandson's in there eating lunch. I want to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a couple other things. I wanted to, to go back when you were talking about the people that have had an impact on your career and get you to speak a little bit about Dottie West and her encouragement early on, Larry, particularly, you know, how instrumental she was in getting you heard as a songwriter. Because, I mean, you're a Hall of Fame. You're like one of, you know, country music's most successful songwriters. So talk a little bit about Dottie, Dottie encouraging you and the role that Johnny Cash later on played. Well, Dottie heard me sing in Vegas many years ago when I was trying out for the Imperials, and I didn't get the job I was trying out for, but she heard me writing a couple little songs. I used a guitar there, an ovation guitar that Glenn Campbell had given her, and she said, you're just making that up. I said, yeah. She said, well, send me some songs, and I'll try to help you. So I went home to Houston, sent her eight songs. Two or three of them were okay, but they were good enough for her to bring me to Nashville, where she then introduced me to Red Lane and Willie Nelson and uh, uh, Roger Miller and Mickey Newberry and Johnny Cash and Dottie was a fabulous songwriter. So uh, I, I'm grateful to her. And that's, like I say, that's one of the stories I want to tell. And then that goes all the way up to having a, a, a signed letter from Frank Sinatra about him wanting to record my song, I've Done Enough Dying. Mm -hmm. Well, we were gonna do an album of my songs and then he pulled a dirty trick. He died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's check, still check, please. <laughs> it's things that we want to share with with our fans that they may not know. Yeah. I'm gonna take them to my wall, and, and pictures that we have of Steve and Rudy. I have most of them up there on the wall anyway, and, and let the people in on the incredible life they have that they're responsible for. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened without them. So uh, that's that's my plan. Awesome. Can I go play golf now? <laughs> One more thing, just two more things. When did you know, this hadn't been 65 years, when you started when you were six. So when did you know, or when did you feel like you had made it? This for all three of you, when, when, what was that moment did you feel like, okay, we've arrived? I, I'll speak quickly. I think it was me, and I can't remember if it was, was I don't want to cry or statues the second hit. Larry, mm -hmm. what, I don't know. Well, what, what it comes was, I think it was statues. We cut Broken Lady, and then I guess statues was was next. And I think what's interesting in this business, you can have a hit record, but what you have to do is be able to follow it up with a hit record, and mm -hmm. follow it up with another hit record in order to have a career. And so I think when we cut statues, I guess it was, and it went to number one after Broken Lady, I realized that we weren't just a, a one hit wonder possibly. So that was very important yeah. to me knowing that we could do this, uh, three of us got there and make music together. Cool. You know, That's a great response. I remember the night that we won the, uh, the little talent show in, a, in Abilene, Texas. I remember it. I don't know if y'all do. I vaguely Not remember it standing there uh, doing the songs. Are you quitting, Rudy? <laughs> I guess he quit. So... I remember being so at home and so comfortable and not nervous on this. I knew right then, right then at six years, seven years old, as much as a seven year old can know, I knew what I was going to do. Now, intermittently, I wanted, I mean, I wanted to take Mickey Mantle's place in center field for the Dodgers. I, I mean, for the Yan uh, Yankees. Uh, and I wanted to quarterback the Dallas Cowboys and all those things that little boys want to do as they grow up. But no, the underlying theme of my life is singing music with these two scoundrels. It's just pretty simple. That's wonderful. Oh, what's that, Rudy? That's the little That's trophy. trophy we won. Oh, you still have that? That's amazing. Oh yeah, first, says first award cavalcade of talent, 1955. That is so cool. I love that you still got that and put your hands on it after all these years. Now, the other one, the other uh, talent show we won was in Odessa at the Ector County Coliseum. We won a Shetland Pony. Wow. 
Uh, I still wow. have him. He's wow. tied up back in the back. Wow's not even the word for that. Wow. <laughs> we can change the story about that horse. Mean. God, he was mean. And there was a little group from Wink, Texas that won second place. They won dinner for four at the Blue Star in Midland. They were uh, the Wink Westerners. They didn't amount to much, but their lead singer did. Uh, what was his name? Roy Orbison. Wow. Yeah, he got oh second. Oh, my goodness. Evidently, he recovered from that second place finish because about a year and a half later, he had only the lonely. Bum, bum, <laughs> bum, that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. You guys have lived through some wonderful history, you know? Got a lot of stories. History. Yep. Well, as we wrap up, anything that you want to say to fans that are going to be seeing this that wonder what you've been up to and what they can look forward to? Any closing comments? By stay way, tuned. Yeah, yeah, stay tuned. Hang in there. We're gonna, we, we are going to get through this. It's like, you know, I, went, uh, I and I'll, I'll share a very personal thing with me. I went through a depression many, many years ago, and uh, my wife did not try to fix me, did not try to tell me to go do, go get medicine, go to a doctor, go whatever. She said two things. She said, I love you, and we will get through this. And I think that's exactly what I need, uh, from my standpoint, to tell not, I mean, the brothers tell each other that all the time, but our fans, things are going to get better. You know, uh, yeah. believe in a man upstairs that's got all this under control and just hang in there. Yeah. And for that's God's great. sake, stay safe. <laughs> Where'd they go? I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, uh, from my standpoint, uh, I, don't, I don't claim that I have any more faith than anyone else. You either have it or you don't. And I fall back on our spiritual teachings, you know, from our mom and dad and Sunday school. You know, we're going through a lot of stuff right now in our country, not only with the COVID, uh, uh, the master teacher, the Lord Christ, he said, fear not. Uh, that I don't think that was a suggestion. I think that was a commandment. So, I say, fear not, wear your mask and wash your hands. Yep. You know, for the other part, you know, the, the going through so many, uh, the riots and the, all the upheaval in our country, we did a show, with the show we did the other night, and for some reason, right after we did or before we did uh, the national anthem, I my mind just went to what our country's going through right here, and I just went red and yellow, black and white, they are just in his sight and in mine and in Steve and Rudy's and in our band. We're all God's kids. He painted us with the great palette that he had of many different, and he's, he's the orchestrator. He's the artist. So I'm trying to do my, my best in all of these this time to be a happy warrior. You know, we've got people and politicians and people screaming at each other. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to smile and say, I love you. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't mess with me, but I love you, you know? Yeah. So that's where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and fear not, hold on. Yeah, you're going to be a little afraid. Come on. But uh, we're going we're gonna to reach up, grab the big hand, and move forward. Oh, wow. Thank perfect. you for saying Yeah. People needed to hear that, guys. Thank you so much. That's true. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of depression. There's just much uncertainty. And uh, that's great encouragement. Thanks. And thank you all three for taking time to do this. It's been a while since I got to interview you. So I really enjoyed talking to you today. Well, well thank you, Deborah. Love. Thanks. God bless. Thank Bye. You. Thanks. God bless y'all. Thank you. Bye.